So wh what we're doing in Balance View is, is really seeing what we're capable of and um, how our mind works and the power and potency of our mind. And the way that that has to come about is by us becoming familiar with what our mind is and how it actually works. It's very simple. Um, and so to identify the fundamental nature of mind, just, just stop thinking for a moment. Just allow yourself to notice that there is an intelligence that is naturally present, that is here right now, that is hearing these words, that is experiencing everything you're experiencing, that is bright and clear like a clear sky. Like the sky, we can't find where it begins or where it ends. It's just simpl simply wide open and clear. And each time you just take that opportunity to relax and just allow everything to be as it is, you give yourself the opportunity to notice this fundamental nature of mind, this fund fundamentally wide, completely clear, totally spacious and at ease nature of mind. And it is really vital that each one of us identifies that for ourselves here. So again, just stop thinking and notice this intelligence. Notice the intelligence that is hearing everything that's going on, even if it's just the gentle sound of the ceiling fan or the bird over there. It's the intelligence that is aware of all of your thoughts, all of your emotions, your physical sensations. And the second key point we could say is to recognize, well, how does it work? Now, how, how does my mind work? What, what is my actual experience? What's the nature of my experience? And what can I say about it? I've, I've read books about it, I've heard other people talking about it, I've watched programs and films where everyone has an opinion on the nature of reality or the nature of identity or the nature of mind. But, but what can I say about it? Because we really want to know in our own experience what the nature of mind is, what the nature of reality is. And so when I started to look at my own experience and to see, well, what what can I actually say about what's going on here and now? And I looked and I could see, well, there is this intelligence and you can check again, is it still there? So there's this intelligence and within this vast spacious intelligence, there is this stream of experience. It's a stream of data, a data stream. Everything appearing spontaneously and then resolving naturally without leaving a trace in this pristine nature of mind, in the same way that a, a line drawn in space doesn't leave a trace within the pristine nature of space. And again, I can look at my own experience and the thought that you had just a moment ago, where did it go? Where's it gone? Has it affected this wide open, pristine space of mind? And so, with a simple instruction of short moments of the recognition of this wide open intelligence repeated many times, we become more and more familiar with the actual fundamental nature of mind, the spacious wide open clarity within which and as which all of this data, all of this experience, anything we can perceive or describe is occurring. All of it arising spontaneously and self-releasing naturally. So just to have this insight and then to begin to apply this in the direct encounter with all of our data really brings a sense of relief and ease and begins to open up this data into their true nature. So rather than describing them as these fixed solid things that are somehow occurring out there to, a, a, apart from us, apart from this intelligence. And when we recognize their fundamental nature as inseparable from open intelligence, all of the data occurring nowhere other than in, of, as and through this intelligence, then things begin to, begin to shift, our perspective opens out and the descriptions take on a different quality. They are no longer quite so challenging, either quite so intimidating and scary and threatening or so enticing so attractive, so alluring, we begin to naturally have this, this balanced view because we know the nature of our mind. 
we discover for ourselves and become familiar with this fundamental nature of mind. Now the insights that naturally pour forth as we become more and more familiar are very practical in nature as well as being grandly philosophical. We can answer all of the greatest philosophical questions ever asked, but that's kind of, that's just, you know, by the by. That happens without us even noticing. We, we know what life is all about. We know the meaning of life, just very clear on that. It's no big deal and no mystery anymore. But where it gets really fun is how we actually live our lives. Now, how are we going to live? How are we going to relate? And what's been interesting for me has been the, as this recognition of the actual nature of reality, this pristine nature of mind and the indivisible nature of everything from this pristine mind, the beneficial nature of everything becomes apparent. Not only is everything indivisible from the nature of mind, not only is mind pervasive of all data streams in the same way that um, space is pervasive of everything that occurs within space. It doesn't matter what I do to any object or any person or whatever happens in the universe, space itself is completely unaffected. And, and everything is pervaded by space. And this is a very powerful metaphor for the way that our mind, our intelligence, this open intelligence, effortlessly pervades all of our data. Everything we can perceive, everything we can think, everything we can feel or sense everything we can experience or describe. What happens then is that we see that not only is it indivisible, that it is, but it is potently of benefit. And it is naturally of benefit because it is all indivisible. Everything is already working as a completely harmonious whole. Everything is already settled and at rest in its own place. And as we relax and allow ourselves to be as we are, our thoughts, our emotions and our sensations, then what happens is that our intelligence and everything about us becomes effortlessly aligned with this beneficial nature of everything as it already is. And that beneficial potency, that capacity to respond in a way that is of benefit to ourselves and everybody else, just increases and increases without us needing to work anything out or to do anything. The assurance that this is the actual nature of reality and our capacity to express that, that beneficial nature occurs through participating in this Four Mainstays lifestyle. The first of the mainstays is this practice of short moments repeated many times until open intelligence is obvious at all times. So a very simple practice, short moments of just the recognition of this wide open spacious nature of mind amidst the flow of unpredictable wild data. Very, very simple practice but incredibly profound in its results. And what's key here is that you test this out. You're open enough to test this out and to see what happens. Now with <laughs> relating um, what I see for myself is that all of the ideas I had about who I am, who other people were, how I need to relate, just naturally open out and expand as I allow them to be exactly as they are. My speech changes. The way that I use my body changes. The way that I relate to other people changes. It opens out and expands. And I see that there is this capacity to be of real benefit in very direct and clear ways. And the sensitivity to this incredible display of negativity that we see happening in society at large and in the media and being repeated by many people around the world and by many people that each of us know, that sensitivity increases because we know that it is not true. We know that everything about us, with ever-increasing assurance, is nothing but this flow of benefit, the expression of perfect benefit. The problems come in the way that we have defined our data, referenced it to these old ideas, these learned concepts, repeating everything that we've been told about what we think and what we feel and what we sense means 
categorizing it as negative or positive or somewhere in between and then giving it that fixed meaning and desperately holding to it. And in there, there is no capacity to respond openly because we're responding from a fixed perspective without allowing this spontaneous beneficial potency just to effortlessly pour forth. So to fix on any idea about something like open relating or monogamy or any of these ideas is to immediately limit our beneficial potency and our capacity to see what will really be of most benefit. Now I'm sure all of us have different experiences of monogamy and open relationships and having more than one partner and things like that. But what I see for myself and maybe your experience is different but I see that in almost every instance of an open relationship at some point somebody in that relationship will either take advantage of the situation or feel extremely hurt and disrespected by that situation and by that relationship. And each of us makes this choice how we want to live our life in all ways including what kind of relationships we want to have. And I see that I have the capacity to, to decide that. And the giving up the right to be a victim of heartbreak or any of these other data streams comes through allowing them to be exactly as they are within the context of the four mainstays. So I empower myself to be a powerful, bright, clear, loving human being. And that is what interests me. Not any of these focuses on what kind of relationship should I have or how should it look or how does it mean for that couple or that group over there. It's about me taking responsibility and seeing how I want to live, becoming an example of an empowered, clear, loving, bright human being. And for me that is what is important. And everything else follows naturally from there, effortlessly, like the way it has already been following effortlessly. We're simply aligning with that effortless, spontaneous, seamless flow of reality. Aligning ourselves with perfect benefit. So this is the nature of the mind having access to all of the information within the universe or galaxy or multiverses or whatever you want to describe it as. Our mind is not this narrow, limited, fixed thing that is somehow within this skin suit or this body or this head. The language and the society we're, we're in reinforces these ideas about our intelligence. The way, the, the expression, oh, it just popped into my head. It, it's so pervasive that we use this language and this way of describing ourselves without even noticing what we're doing. But actually what happened is the idea of my head popped into my mind stream. <laughs> So this open intelligence is primary, not my head. Oh. But you can discover whether that is true or not by relaxing and recognizing the inseparability of any descriptions, including the head, the body or anything else, from open intelligence and which is primary. Discover for yourself, become certain, become assured and see that your intelligence is vast and limitless. Have you ever experienced anything that occurred anywhere other than within this vast expanse of your mind? Look at that very clearly and very openly and become certain for yourself. And then apply that in the direct encounter with all of your descriptions.